On asceticism, the model of holy pagan, holy hidden men was to have a family, to be a taumaturgist, to create miracles, to be in touch with the gods, but also to have family and children. Now, the model of asceticism in Christianity was based on the simple fact that the clergy wasn't supposed to amass wealth. They were supposed to funeral the wealth towards the church so that it amasses wealth. Now, the Vestals of Rome, the virgins, were also having plenty of influence. They were very powerful females. So they could sublimate their sexual energies into command and understanding. Now this is a very important key in managing sexual energies or the ophitic currents, the serpent currents, the kundalini. It means that when you amass too much sexual energy, like medieval monks, succubae happen, various detritus of the astral fauna and flora harass you and through your psychomorphs create various nightmares. So, if you sublimate your sexual energies correctly, then it is transmogrified into bliss. And there are certain yogic operations in which you may have three blissful non-seminal orgasms and transpose your soul into a golden body of the gods. Now, why am I mentioning all this? Because even Shakyamuni mentioned that strict asceticism, bodily and soul asceticism, leads to dryness and death. For example, I've seen some nuns on the subway and I scanned their souls. I understand that they may be well-meaning ladies, but by strict sexual asceticism, they kill their souls. They look like dried out corpses with black eyes. And they are completely disfiguring their souls with pain and suffering, no matter how well they intend to be, and that is later transposed onto the other side. So if you cannot manage your sexual energies in a moderate and wise fashion, you cannot sublimate and rectify them into anything useful. That said, in the modern world, which is completely sexually in excess in every possible immoderation, it is also leading to the disfigurement. I've seen all too many hell holes on the other side that cannot attain orgasm anymore, so they attempt to use the bodies of the living males and females, both sexual de demons, the carnal demons, the demons of the flesh, that attempt to propagate through such low-ranking lusts. If you ever wonder about chaotes that are not managing their sexual energies well and wank to a sigil, for example, why are they developing various cockroaches, creepy crawling spiders? Because they use the archaic parts of their nervous systems and will, while activating it by lust and dissemination or ejaculation, they are both attracting the ctonic lower energies or the nervous systems that are primitive or generating such little creatures themselves. Now, the Onisian art of masturbation, when you can use and utilize your Kundalini well, when it goes up or with a partner, a female partner, that is also well developed when it comes to the ophitic serpent energies, you can attain wonders. For example, inviting both ethereal consorts of Dakinis, ethereal consorts of Vajrayoginis, if you can withhold the ejaculation and empower yourself in order to gain realizations and new skills, blessed by the ladies. With a physical partner, both the operations of baphometization both the operations of entwining the currents, both very dangerous operations of black kundalini that is related to the Schwarze Sonne Ops 
in which you grow into, let's say, Plutonia with the ram skull and the stag skull of the female. There are many sexual mysteries in magic that I will not mention here. However, be prepared that not all magic is sexual. It is not. It is an aspect of magic, it is an aspect of operations, but use it wisely. Thank you.